Hello and welcome back to Watching Brief for the week of the 28th of November 2022. I am joined, as ever, by my co-host, Mr. Andy Brockman, who I suspect is going to be doing most of the talking in today's episode. <laughs> that, that's right. It's nothing to do with the state of uh, Mark's throat and the lemsit that he's busy necking. No. <laughs> um, it's more to do with the fact that I'm the only one that's actually spoken to the headquarters of Big Archaeology this week and has actually got the message that we're putting out this um, to, to the um, gullible public. Well, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we've we've got we've got to we've got to keep keep on uh, making sure that people don't actually realise the truth is out there. A ab yeah. Absolutely, nothing we have said in the last nearly ten years of doing watching brief is no. anything to do with what is what actually happened in the in in the human past. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, Graham Hancock for the win. Uh, and incidentally, we may well be touching on Graham Hancock in an upcoming. Um, media special and they are coming back folks uh, i'm actually committing us to this now on recording uh they're coming back in the form... in, in the same in the same in the same way that a political party commits to doing things in its election no manifesto. no 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 we're actually going to do this um in the same way in the, in the same in the form of um in arrears public releases so uh Every month, uh, hopefully every month, we'll have a, a media episode that will be about the month prior going public. But if you are supporting us on Patreon, you'll be able to get that media episode in the month when it's actually relevant. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, um, just to uh, let the let our viewer in on some uh, some backstage gossip or, yeah. or some backstage plans, um, we've actually give, given that we're so close to the turn of the year, um, yeah. we're we're thinking that our first media um, retrospective is going to be on the archaeological and heritage media of 2022. Yeah, yeah, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. Um, anyway, regardless of our plans and regardless of whether or not i have a voice our watching brief does in fact continue and uh, today we're going to be examining a couple of i suspect stories that are that are beginning to erupt these are volcanoes on the heritage news landscape which um had been smoking for a while it seems um but uh, lava is beginning to show, or maybe, maybe, maybe at the very least, a pyroclastic cloud has has been released. Uh, the uh, the second one involves metal detecting and the portal and portable antiquities scheme. Um, but we have to be very careful what we talk about there. So we'll come back to that in a moment. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to be talking about Nottingham Castle. Um, Nottingham, obviously, the famous location for the for the mythology of robin hood and the sheriff of nottingham and it seems that well actually as we hinted last week or as i hinted last week this uh, could actually be the shape of of things to come for some heritage venues depending on management and uh, and, a, and, a, and a series of other things that have, co that have conspired to make uh, what seems to be quite a mess at nottingham so what's what's actually happened down there or up there well, new viewers start here. The Nottingham Castle, um, it's not the um, the medieval castle of no. mythology. Um, and certainly not the medieval city of Carcassonne, which plays the city of Nottingham in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, with Kevin Costner. Um, it's actually oh, mostly... Actually, actually, they also use Pectifan Castle as well in Cheshire, I think. They, they did, they did and yes. as, yeah. well, as, as well as um, I think, uh, as, as I remember rightly, Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman managed to walk to Nottingham via Beachy Head and Hadrian's Wall, yes. which is quite a yeah. journey. In one day. In one day, yes. In one day. <laughs> but um, Hollywood aside, um, in, in, in fact, the, um, the, the modern Nottingham Castle, although it's on the side of a medieval castle, is actually, a, 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 in a sense, it's... Um, a romantic ruin, uh, a romantic um, fancy, just as much as a Hollywood version. Yeah. Uh, it was um, the, the external walls and gatehouse were heavily restored in the Victorian period, and the actual main building is a classic um, country house rather than any kind of fortified, um, for, for, fortified uh, structure. You know, yeah, uh, structure building in in in, in any normal sense that anybody has of a castle. Um, it houses the City of Nottingham's art collection um, and, tra and, and um, various other exhibitions. Uh, I got to know it quite well. I actually lived in Nottingham for a couple of years 
um, in the 1990s. Where and, haven't you uh, lived, Andy? You've, 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 you're a well-travelled man. I'm quite impressed. <clears throat> uh, 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 only in the uh, earlier, younger, more restless part of my life, uh, 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 the peripatetic life of a jobbing theatre technician. Oh. I used to work at Nottingham Playhouse, which is just up the road from the castle. Oh. Um, but... Um, so I got, uh, and, and people might be familiar with the um, the famous crouching statue of Robin Hood loosing off an arrow, uh, which is used as an emblem for the city's tourism, and, and that's actually just outside the the main gate of, of Nottingham Castle. Yeah. Anyway, cut to the cut to the chase. Um, as with a lot of um, local authorities, Nottingham City Council ha uh, put the castle out to an arm's length trust mm -hmm. um, to manage it. And part of that process involved a £30 million revamp of mm. the site, refreshing of the site. Uh, this this happens in a lot of places now because local authorities, as we've mentioned before on Watching Brief, they're strapped for cash. They don't have the money to invest in even a major tourist offer uh, and cultural offer like the castle. Mm. Um, so it's put out to independent management. The council puts in uh, support, loans, um, ass assists in application processes to organisations like the Heritage Lottery Fund. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, around um, 18 months ago, the castle reopened under the management of the trust mm. after £30 million had been spent on, on it, a lot of it coming from the Heritage Lottery Fund. Um and on the 21st of November, the trust announced it was winding up and closing. Hmm. Um, it said it was saddened and hugely disappointed. It blamed a failure to achieve audience targets. Um, and it appointed liquidators, um, a company uh, called Interpath Advisory, which basically means that um the trust will cease to be uh its creditors which includes people who bought advanced tickets for exhibitions and activities mm. um line up to see if there's any money left uh to pay them back at the end of it which is normally uh a small to non-existent chance in these circumstances um so <clears throat> there's also when, when i first uh mentioned this on uh, on social media, on um, on Twitter. Yes, I am still there, even though uh, Twitter has recently announced that they're going to be allowing uh, COVID misinformation back on the platform. Ooh. Um, we'll talk about that later. When maybe. I first mentioned that, um, I mentioned this in this 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 incident. There's some talk locally about um, poor management, interpersonal skills, accusations mm. uh, that are quite ugly um, surrounding racism and and interpersonal um arguments and frustration i mean is it, it, it does it seem as though as though this project has been roundly mismanaged at this stage it's difficult to say um to give people a rough idea um the this has been going on in in way since for at least 10 years about over 10 years um Back in 2010, um, there was an idea for a, a medieval village attraction at the site, yeah. tying into the whole Robin Hood thing. That didn't attract any investment. So they um, then went forward to submit a development plan to the Heritage Lottery Fund in, um, in 2012. That was also rejected. Uh, but in 2014, another bid was successful. Right. Um, so in 2016, they announced plans for a revamp, which at that point was going to cost £24 million. Mm -hmm. um, and the lottery was going to submit £14 million to um, what became in the end a £30 million programme. Uh, in July 2018, the castle was actually closed uh, and they began work. Now, they said at that point they were going to promote uh, or create a, quote, world-class attraction. I see. Um, but then everybody who has a major lottery bid says they're going to create a world-class attraction and come back to that issue maybe in a minute. Every, every, um, everybody in this country seems to be obsessed with world beating. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like our, yes, our, 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 our 
world yep. beating COVID track and trace, which mm -hmm. led to the highest death toll in Europe at one stage, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah, look, it, 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 we're, to, we're the trouble is with, with all of this. We're talking about a lot of PR and a lot of public comment that to justify spending large amounts of what effectively is public money count you know this was this was money from the council money from the heritage lottery fund which is provided by people paying to play the national lottery every week well but yeah. also crucially that money from the national uh, lottery territory Heri national lottery heritage fund comes with provisions you have to deliver yes. on on what you say you're going to deliver on so for example i'm involved, i've been involved in a couple of such projects in recent years and i'm involved in one now and there are reviews and and there are targets yeah absolutely targets there, there there's a, a um a lot of um uh, you know, people involved in those kind of projects as you'll know um a lot of time is spent submitting reports and spreadsheets and um and invoices and so on to the heritage lottery fund to show that you're achieving your targets that you're, you're first of all the project is in good standing and and, and is being conducted properly yeah and is on target and secondly even once you've opened that you're uh, you're 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 achieving your the, the targets that you promised and that is at least part of the problem here they reopened in 2021 june 2021 so just as the country's coming out of covid mm -hmm. um beginning to reopen when the heritage sector and the cultural sector has taken a huge hit in terms of its ability to generate anything mm. um the government spent a vast amount of money um running into the early billions on supporting cultural the cultural sector both mm. buildings and people mm -hmm. um they reopened in june 2021 uh with a target of a footfall of three hundred thousand people minimum per year okay um but within a few months of that um one of the curators um made a complaint about receiving racist abuse in the castle grounds right um and said that the trust hadn't handled it particularly well i see and then the chief executive officer of the trust so the person that is actually you know, taking the final decisions the the, the 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 um a woman called sarah blair manning left her post now it emerged shortly afterwards that she was making an allegation of bullying yes and that case is ongoing then in november of 2021 just a year ago the staff of the castle wrote an open letter criticizing the trust and it in particular its handling of the alleged incident of abuse right. uh, of racist abuse against panya banyoko Hmm. um and followed by that in december so we're only four months into the into the reopening really five months into the reopening yeah they've lost their yeah. ceo they're facing allegations of bullying and inappropriate handling ineffective handling of an, an accusation of racist abuse and then in december 2021 the interim ceo the one who'd replaced sarah blair manning um a man called robin bishop left the post earlier than planned right um and then the following January, January of this year, the Charity Commission it issued formal advice to the Trust over its handling of the alleged racist incident. So you can see this is an organisation that is in deep trouble, hmm. even as it's as it's opening. There's, you know, so whatever the issue around targets and footfall, there appear to be systemic management issues involved as well. To, to, um, and just 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 to be clear i just quickly checked uh that target footfall especially uh this year and mm. last year um is very very uh ambitious the um the the, the footfall at stonehenge dropped admittedly from a, a high in 2019 of 1.6 million people a year to mm. 315,000 and then 334,000 so they were trying to match post covid stonehenge numbers in their business plan, which, uh, given that Stonehenge is, I think it's still probably English Heritage's top visited site, isn't it? It is. Um, yeah. And then followed by Dover Castle, I think, or Dover That's Castle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So it's very um, ambitious. Yeah, and, and although it had, it probably has the name recognition. Um, the tourism potential of Nottingham in the East Midlands is not the same as Stonehenge and 
Dover Castle. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's, um, I think the civil service phrase for a target like that is um, brave. It's yeah. brave to go to a target like yeah. that. Mm. Um, now, so, you know, within six months of reopening, it's lost a CEO, an interim CEO, is facing allegations of bullying and of um, uh, in, inappropriate response to uh, to, ra to, 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 to racist uh, abuse. Uh, it's received formal advice from the Charity Commission, which is about as strong as it gets before they start make, taking disciplinary mm. uh, actions, mm. punitive actions. Mm. You know, for, formal advice is basically do this or else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on the bright side, um, by February, so seven months after they reopened, they said that they'd had their 100,000th visitor. Okay, but do the do the math. They're not going to make three hundred thousand. Sorry, sorry. Do the what? Sorry, by June. So do, do the, the math. Math. Do the math. Maths. Maths. Mathematics. <laughs> sorry, gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Actually, no, anyway. I'm not, not going to apologise for that. It is mathematics. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> dear, dear, dear viewer, I'm only doing that because I know it winds him up. Uh, I, sh I should be much. I should be kinder today as well. I, I'm, I'm, no, was and that, that's how much it winds me up. I've, I've almost lost my voice, and I still have to stop you there. <laughs> and, 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 and sorry. So, yeah. Sorry. So they. So okay. they, they'd reached that point, uh, but they, in that sense, they weren't on target then to reach the three hundred thousand. No, no, no. no. They, 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 they've got. They've got five months to put on another two hundred thousand views visitors then it's clear no. they're not going to do that yeah um and then in march a, another indication that things are not well uh with the management of the site mm. um the staff called for trustees to step down right um and in the same month um uh, an independent investigation backed Ms. banyoko's complaint mm. uh and complaint about the way it had been handled by the trust um and the trust itself said that they'd uh they, they they'd learned quote significant lessons in other words that's a big mea culpa <laughs> fast forward through the summer um they're still putting on visitor numbers but they're that it's likely they're not going to make their target and by september there's another issue with the trust because the the chair of the nottingham castle trust a man called uh, ted cantle stepped down hmm. um and then we come to um, November and the trust puts itself into liquidation mm. uh, on, 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 on the 21st. So, um, I mean, if you, if you recall, not that long ago, we reported on uh, a, a former president's home. I can't remember. Was it Mount Pleasant? Or Mount, yes. Yeah. Mount Pleasant? In America, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> US president's home, yeah. Um, where right. staff and... Uh, trustees and or management had required uh, essentially a third party to come in and, and be an offer the ability to to, to have reconciliation um mm. is, is it is it is, is it that sort of situation but fast you know on a much faster scale it just looks like everything broke down very quickly um yes now i i think we're looking uh, the, the issue in the states was very much about the culture war yeah. and allegations that uh, a group of people have taken control of the museum, uh, of, of the site, um, who wanted to downplay the issue of African Americans and enslaved people, and so on. Yes, mm. um, or, or the, cover the, the coverage and the emphasis on on, on on those particular areas of the history of the site. Mm. We're not looking at that in quite no. quite um, quite so substantially, certainly in in in, uh, in Nottingham. Al although obviously the mishandling of, of an allegation of racism is part of it mm. um it looks as though it's far more an issue of uh, over ambitious targets and and general mismanagement mm. um the result of all this is that uh all uh all the um staff have been made redundant right um the site is now closed and shuttered mm -hmm. and it is now back under the control of nottingham city council um, who originally owned the site yeah. um, and ran the site. Uh, as I say, they put the, run, the management out to the new uh, the new trust and that's what's been wound up. Mm. So there, at the moment, there's no physical danger to the site. It's not as if it's about to be redeveloped or anything like that. No, no. But 
at potentially the busiest time of the year. You know, there were advanced tickets sold for Christmas events and people who booked tickets have now lost their money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, It almost certainly lost their money. Mm. Um, And um, the... um, it, it, it's a it's a case of the liquidators doing their job to see what's salvageable from the business and the council working out how the heck they're going to open up what is basically within the city of Nottingham their chief tourist offer. Yeah, um, uh, <clears throat> I, I also recall we have previously talked about so called macho management creeping its way into the heritage sector as well, um, and uh, this idea of of having ambitious inverted commas targets. Uh, the management is always right, you know, having a strong personality at the top or something like that that's going to drive things forward come hell or high water. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not suggesting that that's exactly what's happened here. Again, you know, the, the, I'm sure that there'll be internal dynamics that haven't been um, fully publicly explored or reported yet. Uh, but ha- what sort of lessons can be taken from what we've seen and what we know of what's happened at Nottingham for other sites across the country. I mean, obviously, I know that you you have uh, uh, a connection to a, a local historic property in yeah. your in your vicinity. And yeah, I'm a member of the board of trustees, like the well, trust that was run in Nottingham. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, um, h- how are you going to make sure that you don't mess up this badly? <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, for, for for a start, much as we'd love some money to uh, to develop the site, we're not looking at an investment of thirty million quid. No, no. Mm. Um, that 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 has to be justified. Elements of it that were loans have to be repaid, which means business targets have to be set and then met. Mm. Uh, look, we don't yet know. There's not enough information in the public domain yet about what's actually happened here. Although I'm sure uh, there there'll be particularly local journalists and someone will be investigating this and, and I'm sure more will come out in due course. Yeah. Um, what I would say is uh, in my experience looking at stories like this, um, well, a couple of things. One is, yeah, okay, again, it's anecdotal, but you look at things like Trustpilot and TripAdvisor and so on, and you see people saying things like, we paid X amount for the ticket and then we had to pay extra for the tour of the caves. Now, Nottingham's famous for it for the tunnels that have been cut into the limestone hill, uh, mounds on which the castle stands. Mm, mm. Um, and the older buildings have cellars cut into the in, into the rock, and they're into you know, um, it, it, it's part of the the history and folklore of Nottingham, and an important part and, mm. a, and, a, and a famous part. Tunnels under the castle were opened up as part of the revamp, um, but they um as i say they were ticketed separately yeah and you've got people saying well i paid you know x and it was only 15 minutes it wasn't really worth it why didn't they just put it in the you know include it in the main ticket Mm -hmm. and um you know so it it is possible for example misjudgments were made like that Mm -hmm. that the ticketing was made too complex and too expensive but they needed to do that because they had their business targets to meet yeah they might have argued Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that is a, uh, a major issue with a lot of lottery projects, lottery back projects, Mm -hmm. um, that the amounts of money put in are so big, but there is an expectation that they will be justified by visitors, users, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and promises are made to get the money. And targets are accepted um, by both sides, mm-hmm. um, which, uh, as I say, might be in that civil service phrase, brave. Yeah. Over, yeah. over ambitious. Mm. And, but I would also say this is a, this is an issue that has been known about since the beginnings of the lottery. Mm. Um, and people are still making this mistake i think we can call it um yep. at best mm-hmm. um one of the earliest lottery projects uh was in sheffield um it was a multi-million project with a brand new uh building very striking modernist building uh it was for the national museum of popular music mm. it too lasted 18 months before it closed because of lack of footfall and it didn't even have COVID to blame at that time. No. 
and the building is now Sheffield Hallam University Students Union. Right. Okay. Well, it also, it, it, I mean, in that instance, you've got to ask, is it the right project at the right time in the right place? Because when I think popular music, I either think Abbey Road or I think Liverpool. You know what mm. I mean? Like in terms of hit the history of, of where you're going to put that museum. Yeah. Um, but Sheffield, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so, but but presumably though, I mean that in this, in that instance, what you have is pr hopefully presumably the National Heritage Lottery Fund, um, having to learn lessons about what's a good a good bet, and I guess it is a bet in that sense, a good investment, um, and what and what's a less safe investment. But it does sound as though Nottingham has uh, blown up in a lot of people's faces, not least as well the people of Nottingham. It's a it seems to be a genuine shame. I have a friend. Um, who lives locally from who comes from Nottingham, uh, and she was kind of annoyed because growing up, actually, access to to the castle as is as was, it wasn't really uh, necessarily guaranteed. But also as well, it wasn't all that exciting. So she was kind of intrigued by what what might be possible, and it turns out that it's all uh, it's all gone gone awry. Um, I suppose in addition though to I mean you, you hinted at at the need to have an a, an adequate you know business model and and not be too too brave in uh, in your uh, in your outlook presumably though another key aspect is not is 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 not underestimating your responsibilities when it comes to interpersonal and indeed abusive um scenarios unfolding in your purview of care um yeah, yeah. Okay. okay i mean look you can build a case certainly without accusing anyone of anything in particular but just from the uh, the, the inputs from the charity commission uh, charities commission um, and, and from comments that have been made by the council the fact that the staff have made repeated criticisms of the uh, of their governing body effectively their employer yeah. uh -huh. the trust mm. um there were clearly systemic problems with the way the site was being run from the get-go mm. mm. And it appears that nobody was in a position to acknowledge this, take control and sort things out. And mm. it's ended up with, uh, as I said, th this implosion, which is, you know, incredibly sad for the people in Nottingham. You know, it's a great site. It's, it, it's one of the big green spaces in the in the centre of the city. It's, you know, it, it overlooks the city. It's a spectacular location. Mm. The, um, you know, it's a great gallery space. They built a... A, a, you know, Robin Hood experience playground in the you know for kids and so on. You know, they, they, it's got lots of things going for it, um, but probably you know, it's not a world class attraction. It's probably a major regional attraction. <laughs> but well, the, the, to, 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 to be fair, know. that's that's not that's not for us to judge. I mean, they, again, it's all about the business plan that they put together and how they're going to execute it in that sense. Yeah, but if you say it's going to be a major world class attraction, you're going to have to attract tourists from all over the world, and uh, yeah, and so yeah. on. And, and 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 you know, yes, they can. They might have been able to build up to that hmm. in due course, but Not it appears the foundation. Months. Exactly, the foundations weren't firm enough to to build that one, and no. certainly not within eighteen months. And uh, hopefully, they'll be able to clear the deck, start again. People who've lost their jobs will be able to be re-employed and the site will reopen mm -hmm. but at the moment that's not happening no a watching brief is a formal program of observation and investigation to record and report on notable discoveries on an archaeological site as part of our ongoing watching brief andy and i work hard to bring you the best the worst and sometimes the more quirky happenings from the world of archaeology we aim to provide a space where voices can be heard, opinions shared, and sometimes truth spoken to power. If you believe in the work we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Thank you. So, from uh, Nottingham and uh, stealing from the rich to give to the poor... We travel over to uh, Preston, it seems, and thereabouts, and someone's attempt possibly to do the same. I'm not really sure what what I can possibly say about this one, so I'm going to let you tread those choppy waters. <clears throat> okay, right. Um, this story is about a um, live police investigation, yeah, uh, which is why we're very 
uh, constrained by what we can actually say. Mm -hmm. Um, And in particular, um, nothing in what follows should be taken to be an accusation against anybody because nobody's been named in connection with this particular story uh, at the time of recording. No. Um, This is to do with the disappearance of fines, uh, including of treasure fines, from the Lancashire Museum in Preston, mm. which had been taken into the care of the Portable Antiquities Scheme. Now, um, new viewers start here. The Portable Antiquities Scheme is the national scheme in England and Wales, whereby members of the public, and it's mostly metal detectorists, can report voluntarily fines they make to what are called fines liaison officers who yeah. are based regionally. Mm-hmm. Um, and they enter the finds on a database, they're studied, they're photographed, they're available for, uh, the, the information about them is made available for future research. The scheme came about uh, because of the fear among archaeologists that uh, important archaeological artefacts were disappearing into private collections or being sold off um, without ever being seen by archae- uh, archaeological experts. And yeah. that therefore the information was being lost as well. Well, and in that sense, um, in that sense the, it was being lost to the nation as well, in terms of indeed. the national story, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Mm. Um, what has emerged in the last week is that an investigation is underway in Lancashire that was initiated after an investigate an internal investigation by Lancashire County Council mm. um, uh, over artifacts that have been signed in by fines liaison officers of the Portable Antiquities Scheme in Lancashire placed in secure store but when they were requested by the treasure uh, registry in london which operates as part of the uh, the 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 treasure valuation committee system at the british museum Mm. uh, when when the treasure registry requested items to be sent to london they checked in the store and the items were no longer there um that that resulted in in the Treasure, uh, the Treasure Committee uh, at the British Museum and the Council conducting an investigation and they found that at least a dozen artefacts which were understood to be in the custody of Lancashire Museum Service were no longer there. The Museum Service appears to have thought that they'd been sent to London but they never arrived in London. There's no record that they were ever received at the British Museum. Um, um, so just, 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 so just, just step back a second then. So in this instance, uh, I suppose first the question number one is what constitutes an artifact? You see, at least a dozen artifacts. Are the is each uh, artifact potentially a coin? That kind of thing. It can vary. Mm-hmm. Now, um, and and the part of the issue is here that because there's a live investigation, only so much information is in the public domain. Right. And it's not fair or appropriate or e- even legal to, to speculate. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, but uh, what you can say is that we're talking about artifacts ranging from a group of bronze axe he- heads, which has been put in the public domain by a metal detectorist who handed them over. Okay. Um to a, uh, a hoard of Roman coins and of silver ingot, which has also been put in the public domain uh, via social media by the metal detectorists who found it. Uh-huh. Um, and potentially there are other individual objects that will qualify as treasure. I mean, I was involved in a Treasure Act um, a case once. I had to write a report um, because a, uh, a metal detectorist working on an excavation, which I was running, um, found a medieval silver ring. Yes. Um, and that had to be declared as treasure and um and reported right. so yeah, that, that's the kind of range of material that you're that, that you're talking about here so it could be an individual object it could be a group of objects i see but it's tw- see. certainly 12 12 lots of uh 12 sets of artifacts or arti- artifact or artifacts I were see. missing but crucially in this first tranche of cases the casework files the documents were also missing oh <laughs> hmm. yeah now because that was that i guess that was going to be my second question was that how do we know something hasn't gone wrong at the london end but i guess if documents have gone missing in uh, lancashire then yeah 
That, that's so, right. London had been told about stuff, but when yeah. they came to ask for it, it was no longer there and neither were the files. Right. It appears to be what happened. Okay. Uh, and I'm basing this on uh, an email which I've seen, um, which was sent by uh, an officer from Lancashire County Council from the Archive and Museum Service uh, to the finders of this material. Right. Yes. Now, the British Museum and Lancashire Museum Service uh, jointly investigated this first group mm. of missing finds. Um, initially, they believed that it might just be that the these finds have mostly been registered during COVID, and it might be that there was some kind of problem in that they'd gone missing. They'd gone missing somewhere else in the system, and, and so someone's on. Someone's drawer or something. It'll, yeah, exactly. <clears> that people <throat> were working at home, uh, couldn't come into the office, that kind of thing. Yeah, that appears not to have happened. Okay. Um, they then um, began another investigation in July this year after what appears to be an unrelated case of workplace theft at the Museum of Lancashire in Preston. Okay. Um, the council called in one of its senior fraud investigators, mm. um, as well as specialist conservators, who uh, curators, who weren't connected with the Portable Antiquities Scheme. And they conducted an investigation and audit, which found that additional artefacts were missing, although this time the documents were, were hadn't gone missing. Right. Um, the upshot of that is that um, in October, Lancashire police were called in, and there's currently a live police investigation into the disappearance of all the artefacts concerned. Okay. Um, now, obviously... Again, we are restricted in what we can and cannot say about this case. Mm -hmm. uh, what part, though, of the system might be requiring examination in terms of security in, in, in an instance such as this? For example, uh, could it be that cleaning staff just happen to get, it, get at uh, a safe in a, in, a, in a government building, in a local authority building? Um, or, 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 or is it a bit more likely to be people who, who more routinely had access to this sort of place or is, are connected with these questions? <laughs> That's very we can't, awkwardly we can't spec... It is. It, look, we, it, it, it is a, a legal and moral minefield here. Look, yeah. um, we can't speculate about who might be responsible. No. The uh, the council email, which I said, I, I, I've seen, uh, ascribes the disappearance to the actions of an individual or individuals unknown. And right. that's what the police are investigating. And we have to let the police carry out their investigation. Okay. Um, I think what we can say is just fill in some background, which is in the public domain. The council mm. says that the artifacts were stored within a secure storage, some kind of safe or, uh, or secure store, within an office which was routinely locked, within a building which was um, covered by security and to which the general public had no access. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, start, that's the starting point of the investigation. Material has gone missing in those circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And it says it's, it's for the p police to see what evidence there is as to what individual or individuals may be responsible. The fact of the investigation will be extremely embarrassing, both for Lancashire Museum Service and for the Portable Antiquities Scheme. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and secondly, one of the reasons for the embarrassment would appear to be uh, that they're, on the face of it, there appears to have been no audit system whereby treasure items were regularly checked that after they've been signed in, they remained in safe custody. Yeah. You know, anybody who's worked, in, for example, um, if you work with uh, ammunition of any kind, pyrotechnics, drugs in a hospital, you know, safes are, you have to sign things in, sign things out. Um, if something's used, it's 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 written up in a log, mm. um, and it's cross-checked by a second individual usually, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that somebody can't manipulate the system and, uh, for example, 
supply themselves with some with with controlled drugs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, it happens on wards where there's medicine. It happens in places where they're hazardous or even just expensive materials being used. Precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Precisely. <clears throat> there appears to have been no such system in place, or if there was, it wasn't working. Right. Right. So uh, I suppose this leads me to two questions, which I'm fairly sure I can ask in this in this context. Uh, question number one: um, How is how is the metal detecting community taking this? In so much as you've seen that some metal detectors have made it known what they supplied that has gone missing, um, mm -hmm. and knowing what we know about the metal detecting community in recent months and years. Uh, this potentially might play into some biases uh, and some arguments that that private sellers, for example, try to make that it's much better uh, that the that, that material doesn't necessarily find its way into the hands of the system. Um, how, how, is, how is that coming across so far? Uh, is it an even handed response? Well, certainly in terms of what I've seen, and again, I've seen, uh, I've been looking at um, metal detecting social media and i've been passed material uh, by people by sources in the metal detecting community uh -huh. um the understandably the people who are directly affected by this the people who have obeyed the rules and declared their fines mm -hmm. registered their fines with the flos had them taken into custody as part of the treasure process are spitting tax um, they are deeply upset and and many of them very angry yeah that this has happened yeah and again this is not blaming anybody um it's not accusing anybody of anything but the fact that this material has disappeared while it was meant to be in the safe custody of the people they have to hand it over by law to by law under the treasure act mm, mm. um they you know you can understand why people are, uh, are angry and upset in that sense it's it's even more um it's even more specifically annoying than say handing over material to an auction house for appraisal and then it goes missing because you don't have to legally do that <laughs> whereas here yes. you have people following the rules and their material has gone missing somehow yeah yes that's, that's not good it goes to the heart of of, of trust in hmm. professional curators at museums and the portable antiquity scheme which as i say is a national scheme so you know if if if, if trust is damaged in the portable antiquity scheme that is damaged nationally hmm. now again stepping away from the current investigation and uh, I'm, I'm making a general observation that is not based on anything to do with the Preston investigation yeah <clears throat> but there have been oh, allegations no, oh, no you've, you've caught you've caught what I've got <laughs> <laughs> um the, that, that you know there, there has long been gossip in the portable um in, in, in the metal detecting community yes. that material has gone missing while it uh it's being looked after by F or looked at by fellows in the portable antiquity scheme yes. nobody has ever brought forward any hard evidence that that was happening no it's just it's just being gossip and um it, it, and, and and no more than that yeah mm. um this is the first instance where an investigation has actually been formally mounted that I'm aware of. Mm. Um, certainly at this level. So that, and that, well, that, that, that brings me to my, my second question. Uh, and that is, uh, you can take this as literal or, or hypothetical as you want, but if you were running mm. a scheme like the portable antiquity scheme that relies so heavily on trust, uh, mm -hmm. presumably you would want to do, uh, a quick head count immediately wouldn't you i mean well what mm -hmm. in that sense what what's the best or perhaps what's the worst case scenario for this unfolding so for example uh could this potentially see the requirement for a root and branch change of how the system works or or might might uh in some future scenario um might uh, uh people be able to point at individual or an individual I I group of people and say well actually this wasn't the system this was people over there this was a human error aspect uh, and actually the possible possible antiquity scheme is perfectly adequate i mean where 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 do you think we are on that sort of scale again not not prejudging a case in that sense okay talking talk entirely hypothetically um 
I think, you know, if, if I were in charge of those systems right now, mm. whatever happens with the investigation, mm. and as I say, the police are investigating, there are no conclusions to be drawn at the moment. No. Um, but just on a precautionary basis, because you always look over your systems and you, you, you shouldn't sit back and just say, because something's always been like that, say it should stay like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I will be looking at the systems looking at the checks and balances within the system um and um i would most certainly be auditing what is being held in safes across the country mm, mm. and checking that what's been signed in has remained signed in and the, the location of everything that is in the system is known mm. is there, uh, that's just that, that's just that's just common sense management yeah yeah other other i mean can i ask as far as given given that this is a system that's that's designed by definition to handle precious metals <clears throat> and material that that may well be have monetary monetary intrinsic worth and value therefore it's saleable and so on and so forth um how formal are the storage solutions in 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 the context of flos uh like i suppose what i'm asking is do we have any sense of how vulnerable different offices or different regions might be? Would, would a particular place simply have a a big lock on a door as opposed to actually having a safe? I mean, how, how formal are these these storage um, solutions? I mean, the, sim the simple answer to that is we don't know, and nor should we know. No, um, you know, n n nobody dealing with that kind of material publishes their security arrangements. No, okay, yeah, fair for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's fair to uh, add that most FLOs operate out of local museum services. Um, and as in the case in Preston, they'll share facilities, including secure facilities. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... I mean, I'm, I'm, know, not, the, I'm not suggesting... I, I, I mean, and, and obviously museums have their own security arrangements in place for their collections and their reserve collections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not suggesting that it, that, that, that someone would just use their drawer, for example. Um, but I'm just, I'm just curious, I was just curious about whether or not there was some minimal um, re recommended standards. The other thing as well that I'm curious about, given mm -hmm. that we've just been talking about potentially uh, or the scourge of macho management and how it may, may well connect to sites such as Nottingham Castle... Uh, in this instance, um, is this a is this a yet another heritage organisation that may well be vulnerable to the the good chap theory of governance? Uh, that is to say, are there any special checks that FLOs have in terms of their trustworthiness and their ability to to handle valuable materials? Um. All I would say on that at the moment, again, given that there's a live investigation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. underway, um, is what I'm always saying, um, and you're always pointing out to me, uh, archaeologists aren't always the good guys. Mm, mm. Now, that is not making any judgment at all about this particular case. I know, I know. Mm. Um, it may be the case that, the, you know, as you said, the office cleaners aren't always aren't always the good guys. The rest of the office staff aren't always the good guys. Yeah. The the, you know, the, the postman the, isn't the, always a good guy. The, the, yeah. It, it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, the actions of individual, an individual or individuals unknown is what the council is saying here, and that is absolutely the case. Nobody's being accused of anything. Mm. But. Um, as you say, yeah, um, just because somebody is in a particular role in society uh, that is respected or, 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 or believes it has a particular, particularly strong ethical basis um, doesn't mean that is actually the case. So, <clears throat> you know, as we've seen, uh, 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 you know, in the past, uh, you know, in the past, you know, um, family gps have murdered their their, their patient, patients on their list and there's currently a trial where <clears throat> a nurse is accused of murdering patients in a neonatal unit this is true so, this is true yeah, uh, uh, we, 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 we mustn't be we must always be open to the potential for serious problems within our profession this is true this is true but i, I suppose to put it another way um uh, and do tell me, do tell me if you just if we just cannot answer this question. I, I am genuinely curious about this. Mm. Um, if you're if you are driving one of those 
cash transit vans. You know, the ones that say, you know, this this van is monitored GPS and, you know, mm. cars follow. Driver right, has no access to the cargo compartment. Exactly, that. that kind of thing. The guy or gal getting out and, and doing the run from shop to van has extensive background checks done on their mm -hmm. character and person because there's a certain amount of there's an insurance risk there there's a, a safety risk to their colleagues and so on and so forth and also i think probably there's likely a risk to the public if they get it wrong as well um now obviously handling material in the context of the possible antiquity scheme is not as uh banks and robber uh kind of cartoony stick them up this is this is a hold up kind of scenario but nonetheless yeah. there is an amount of trust there that I'm, I'm very, very broadly, as broadly as I can possibly ask, are FLOs subject to the to any measure of extra checks upon their character where, because they're dealing with material that absolutely will ha likely have a, a, a large monetary value? Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk to the issue of FLOs. I, am, I can talk to the issue of people working in... Um public facing roles in the museum services and things okay. like that, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which is that anybody these days working in a public facing role is uh, in, 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 in something like a museum or, yeah. or a heritage building or whatever <clears throat> um, is subject to at least a basic disclosure and barring service DBS check mm -hmm. to see if they have any kind of criminal record. And if they're, if they've got any possibility of interacting with uh, minors or vulnerable adults an enhanced DBS check. Yeah, yeah, mm. which I which so I have, for example. yeah, mm. exactly, and and, yeah. and I have too. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, so that that would be a routine part of recruitment in most organisations um, recruiting for those roles. Okay, okay. Well, th well um, th and, th th thank you, of, thank you for trying to go somewhere with that answer. I'm glad you didn't say we can't talk about. The... <coughs> no, no. Okay, interesting. No, I mean, and I, I think the, the most appropriate thing to, to do, I think, to finish is to um, just uh, read the um, the comments that um, I was given when I, I was researching this story for the pipeline, and um, I approached Lancashire Police and the council. Lancashire County Council uh, for comments as well as Portable Antiquities Scheme. Mm -hmm. um, the Portable Antiquities Scheme hasn't replied, although it did tell the Sun newspaper who reported on an earlier part of this story um, that uh, they didn't feel it was appropriate to comment at this time as it was a police matter. Right. Um, Lancashire, um, uh, Lancashire Police confirmed that the investigation was going on going on and what they said is quote we are investigating after some artifacts were reported missing from the lancashire county museum service collection we were first notified about the missing items in october hmm. if anyone has any information or can help with inquiries call 101 or email force control room at lancashire police dot uk uh, dot police dot uk quoting investigation number 04 stroke 11 65 99 stroke 22 and we'll place that link below the line in um in the uh, in the watching brief um and they added that anyone with concerned about missing items should direct questions to the uh, lancashire county museum service okay. that lancashire council museum service um and again they did it is important to stress no individual or individuals have been named in connection with the investigation hmm. um Lancashire County Council told me, quote, we first contacted the police in the summer to look at the disappearance of a number of finds held in secure premises by the council as part of the British Museum's portable antiquities scheme. We are in the process of contacting all finders who have been affected to update them further on the situation. In line with the Treasure Act process, finders will be compensated if their item is among those which are missing. And they concluded, as the investigation is ongoing, it would not be appropriate to comment any further at this stage. I suppose that, sorry, I, I've just got one last question then. Um, how do you compensate someone for something that, that was going through the process of being valued? Um, I can't comment specifically on the treasure process um in this how it's being used in this instance uh -huh. but for example if you've got a roman coin of a known denomination and a known mint and it's been photographed and so on you can ascribe a value to it in broad terms okay 
okay uh and if you know uh, uh, and and so it, it's possible to uh come up with a figure um now again you know, the finder might then argue with that figure and say actually it you know that mint you know an item of that type from that mint was sold by you know Sotheby's last year for you know, ten thousand pounds and you're only offering me you know 70 um yeah it, it's open to being argued but the, the treasure process is always open to being argued we saw that in the jersey case recently mm. uh, where a value was uh, the value that was given to the finders was much more than the treasure valuation committee recommended yeah 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 so you know um but the, 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 there is a, there is a recognized process for, for for doing that so if the item's known it can be in in general terms the finder can be uh, the finder and 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 the and the owner in fact the finder and the owner aren't always the same thing because normally the the um the finder would split the monetary reward with the landowner 50 50. yeah yeah so you know uh but i think the important thing is you know yes people um, you know, there, there are financial issues at stake here and the council may well find itself substantially out of pocket on this. Mm. Um, but at, at the same time, the real loss is to the community who, you know, material will no longer be there to be researched if it's disappeared. Yeah. Well, uh, and I hate to say it, 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 even if, even if, um, uh, even if nothing comes of this case and there's no there's no one found at fault or to be blamed, <clears throat> there's enough of a kernel here that the mythology surrounding the risk of engaging with the Portable Antiquity Scheme um, is likely to continue in certain parts of the metal detecting community. I suppose what I'm saying is it's it's not good for for for, for the reputation of a, of a perfectly, well, uh, a very good idea in that sense it's not it's not good for the reputation of that idea no mm. um it is extremely unhelpful yeah 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 i think we navigated that quite well <laughs> i don't know i might i might have to cut out something here or there i guess we'll see but uh thank you for for helping me steer that ship andy um if anyone has any comments or thoughts, please do comment below. Of course, if you have any uh, queries along similar lines, again, the police have asked that you reach out to them. So uh, definitely do do that. Again, we'll be linking to their <clears throat> to their statement below. Um, yeah. Uh, any 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 final thoughts or ideas of what we might be talking about in the in the in the near future, Andy? Um. Just at the moment, no, no, no. We're in a really weird kind it's, of build up to Christmas silly season, aren't we? <clears throat> it's it's it, yeah, and, 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 and but as as people have just listened to, some far from silly things are going on in heritage world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's been a watching brief. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Andy, for your time as ever. Until next time, do take care. Bye bye. And rest your throat. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs>